everyone. Welcome to the next edition of Beyond the Spotlight. I'm Denise Coletta, team lead of City National Bank Music Banking Group. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of having with me Dina LaPolt of LaPolt Law, a music law firm specializing in entertainment law and intellectual property. Dina, thanks so much for joining me today. There's not a lot of women in music, as you know. There really isn't a whole bunch of us, particularly yeah. in any sort of role where you're either an attorney or you're doing finance. And so, you know, finding you has always been a bright spot in my career. Well, thank you, Denise. I mean, it's better now. I mean, when I first became a music lawyer, there were no women. And we really try to hire a lot of women and encourage women and empower women because there wasn't a lot of women when I became a music lawyer, and there wasn't a lot of people of color either. What do you wish artists understood or songwriters understood about the business of entertainment? How income is monetized, okay? Because in the music business, we have three bundles of rights that all are governed under different sets of laws that are all monetized very differently, but they all have to fit seamlessly together in contracts all the time, which are copyrights. And as you know, there's the copyright in the underlying musical composition and also the copyright in the sound recording. We have the rights of publicity, which is the commercial use of someone's image. So the more famous they get, the more that image is used. And the trademarks. And the trademarks are, you know, the, the federal protection for the use of someone nickname or moniker. All of those rights are very instrumental in the music business and they're all monetized very differently. You know, maybe you can talk a little bit about what you're seeing in the market. Because we had this law that recently passed in 2018 and it's currently being implemented today, catalog sales are going crazy. Some We're seeing them up to 30 times multiples. And as a music lawyer who specializes in copyright, it's very exciting because it's really where creatives have a lot of power. I mean, look, you think about it, you write songs, you work your whole life to build your, you know, as you say, equity, right? It's just like real property. If you own a house in a very prestigious part of town or in the country, it just grows over time. So if you write a hit song 20, 30 years ago, it becomes very valuable, especially if the songwriter owns or controls part of that song, which usually they do, because if they're not getting a reversion in their publishing deal, they're certainly getting it in the Copyright Act. You're known as an amazing attorney, but I think you're equally known for your activism on behalf of songwriters, artists, and performers. And your commitment to advocacy also seems very personal. Can you tell me a little bit about what drives that dedication in your advocacy work? I've always been an advocate. When I went to school for music for my bachelor's, the first thing I realized is that the musical composition income streams are all highly regulated by the government. So I've been into songwriter advocacy from the very beginning, like trying to unregulate copyright, trying to untangle this you know, mess that they have with the consent decrees. And so I've always been into that. And then when I formed Songwriters of North America, that's when my songwriter advocacy efforts really kicked off. So Dina, you've worked with City National for 20 years. How has our long-term collaboration with you helped you and your firm on your way up? Oh, I mean, this is a business of relationships. And anything from record companies to publishing companies to your artist clients to the bank, and having a personal relationship with the bank is so important. For us as a law firm, it's incredible. We have a client trust account that's mandated by the state bar, and that's very easy to work with, with City National, plus all of the digital protections that City National has and all the people that have worked there. You know, one of the things I love about City National Bank is there's very little turnover. You know, just a really, really, really great experience. And I know because of your entertainment division in LA, a lot of business managers have banking for their clients at City National Bank, which means a lot of our clients are at City National Bank and it is very seamless. I really love that relationship. Well, we, we love that you chose us 20, 20 years ago and, um, you know, have grown together. So, you know, thanks for your, your long-term relationship and partnership with us. Thanks, Denise. So Dina, we're really appreciative of you taking your time with us today. Excited to see what's next for you and LaPolt Law. 
Uh, thanks to everybody for watching this edition of Beyond the Spotlight. Be sure to check out our other episodes coming soon. Thanks again, Dina. Thank you for having me, Denise.